Atlanta cinematographer Christian Sprenger, an Emmy Award winner for the comedy series and a four-time Emmy Award nominee, including two nominations this year for Atlanta and Station Eleven. But we're going to talk about Atlanta. I want to start broadly, Christian. You've done, you did every episode of season one and season two. Coming into season three, after such a long time away from the show, I guess, how did you guys talk about, you know, how you wanted to reestablish the show visually and where you wanted to go for season three? You know, each season that we've done, or at least season two and season three, we both kind of had like an overall um, thematic approach from the, you know, from the writer's room on. And so um, season three, we, we kind of knew that we had this somewhat loose, um, I wouldn't say horror, but maybe like ghost story theme that kind of uh, strings throughout each episode. And so we we knew that we were going to have uh, a rather darker and and moodier season. Uh, we actually shot um, Stephen Murphy, uh, who's a, an incredible BSC uh, cinematographer, um, shot our European episodes. Um, I took a hiatus uh, as I was having a baby, uh, and my family's having a baby, and and uh, so they shot the European episodes, and then we came back um shot season four along with the episodes uh, uh my episodes of season three which are all standalone basically like short films um we did four um where we didn't have any of our original cast in there and and they were kind of their own um each one had its own uh aesthetic uh aesthetic that very much uh you know differentiated from each other and 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 strayed somewhat away from what the show's aesthetic is um, but but yeah, overall, you know, we knew that there was going to be this um, this new kind of look established, and um, you know, the look, like I said, changed from episode to episode. But we knew that there was going to be this kind of through line throughout, uh, and you know, also we knew that the show hadn't been on the air for you know four years, and so uh, in particular, uh, this episode, you know, was very important to us that we kind of came back with a bold statement so so you mentioned the horror aspects of it or like the ghost aspects of it obviously i think so the episode is three slaps it was the season uh three premiere first episode that's you're nominated for i was like i just was riveted from the first from jump basically you have this scene it reminded me a little of uh twilight zone the movie i don't know if you're familiar with that but like albert brooks and dan Aykroyd in the car and it has that same kind of thing where you have these two characters we've not seen before talking on like a boat in a lake and ends up having a really good twist ending and it's just is completely unsettling and yet immediately you're like in on it and i found that throughout the whole episode i was just riveted by the fact that like you said like this is a standalone episode not the main cast donald glover appears at the very end but as a viewer i'm immediately able to like ascertain like who these characters are why i'm rooting for them what they're doing and i obviously that's in the writing but i think visually it, it really you the way you're telling the story visually is just so incredible and able and so economical in that regard i guess can you talk about how you guys discuss that and are able to like generate that kind of like immediate response from a viewer yeah i mean it was a, it was a major concern of ours something that we wanted to handle very delicately because you know we knew that the audience was going to be uh very thirsty for our main cast to be back on screen and we're delivering the premiere episode with none of those cast members and so you know it, it felt pretty clear to us that we needed to like deliver something that was that you immediately identified with and could uh you know start to uh, have sympathy for this main character and follow along this main character's story and so the boat scene that you're referring to at the very beginning you know that's somewhat of a mission statement for the whole episode i mean it you know that the those characters basically like lay out what the season is thematically about about to be in you know in front of you for the next 10 episodes um and so we knew that wanted to be treated separately and then the story of Aquarius, which is actually based on true story um you know we immediately had to lock into you know you identifying with and and uh wanting to sympathetically follow this this young boy and so everything that we did uh you know from a coverage standpoint from a production design standpoint from you know lighting and and, and camera work everything wanted to service you know locking the audience into this little little kid's storyline can you talk a little about how you work with uh, Hiro Mirai, obviously directed this episode, and, and you he's an incredible director, and you guys work so well together, obviously. Uh, can you talk about how you guys work together and, like, what that relationship is like and how it's kind of evolved ac across the series, too? And I know you've worked with him on Station 11, too, but for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we've we've worked together now for probably going on eight years, and uh, I don't know. We, you know, we, it's just that that incredible uh, scenario where you click in with a director and you see things the same way, and you have, you know. I think we both have very similar tastes and at the same time we've sort of developed our tastes together over you know the last um almost decade and and uh you know i think our process is a very you know free-flowing sort of organic process we had these scripts really really early and so we spent months talking about this script uh, a, a lot more so in terms of execution there's a lot of like pretty complicated execution um, beads in this episode but you know we had a, just sort of generally we had a very good understanding of what this meant uh thematically and i think we we really try to tell the story from that standpoint first and foremost and let that inform all decisions you know all of our color palette decisions all of our you know uh contrast ratio decisions and uh color correction all of that stuff everything really needs to get motivated and, and decided through the lens of, you know, who, who are these characters? What is the story we're trying to tell? And, I, and he and I both, I think, uh, value that type of an approach. Um, and so, yeah, that's, you know, we, we spend a lot of time breaking down scripts and, and, and really discussing story and characters. For this three slaps episode, what was something that was incredibly difficult to execute or like a shot that you guys were like really kind of, trying to, you know, untangle, I guess. I mean, I would say the the final sequence uh, with, you know, the van crashing over the bridge, uh, it's very, very complicated. It took, you know, a couple weeks of rigging. We shot it in basically sort of like a, uh, a stretch of road that cut through some protected land. And so there was like absolutely no lights there whatsoever. So we, we built and lit uh light posts for like two mile stretch and laid you know we had something like seven different generator placements with seven different condors you know basically lighting 360 in the middle of these woods and shooting you know at the end of november uh with a child in rain it was a very complicated <laughs> situation it took several days to shoot that sequence uh, and took a lot of coordination and, you know, it was, there were times where were very, very dangerous scenarios, but, uh, you know, pulled it off pretty well. I think when you guys are doing, like you said, like having getting like treating these, each of these episodes as like its own short film almost, right? Like how much freedom does that give you as a cinematographer then to like experiment and try different things, even away from like, you know, a typical, whatever, I don't even know what a typical episode of Atlanta would be at this point, because they're all just so different and they all have the similar, oh, like a different flavor and stuff. And that was one of the things I really loved about the season so i guess for you as a cinematographer how exciting is that on the stuff on the episodes you're working on to get to like kind of flex like that very exciting i we actually shot season four first which is uh not to give anything away but just very much like the sort of back to the standard what atlanta looks and feels like and so we shot an entire season of season four and then we ended and we went on hiatus and then we ended with this block of season three episodes and so the season three the standalone scripts were sort of like these uh celebration of us you know finishing the show and also you know having the right to break out of the aesthetic of the show and you know we did again we did talk a lot about how the, the you know we don't want people to not realize uh that this is still the same show um so you know there was there was a lot of discussions about like at what what parts of our language our visual language do we want to preserve and what parts do we want to explore or push into other boundaries and so that was a constant discussion uh, in pre-production in production you know in lighting and camera movement and a huge discussion in the di as well you know we we wanted it to feel different but we didn't want it to feel so different that it felt not like our you know language i guess what was the, one of the visual language uh, things that you kind of held on to, I guess, before we wrap up here? Because I find that fascinating. I mean, I th you know, I think the show, we try to approach the show from a very like, uh, vis like a naturalism, uh, dark, moody naturalism, I guess I would call it. And and that was something that I think we, we realized was important to preserve. It would feel weird if all of a sudden we were doing a bunch of studio lighting and backlights and or, or hard, you know, hard lighting that didn't have motivation. And so I think from a, from a lighting aesthetic, that was something that, you know, we understood was something 
to preserve. Um, and, and I think the, you know, the DI ultimately we used our same colors to Ricky Gosses, who's been on the show for the whole run. Um, and I think he brings a lot of continuity, um, to the show as well. So, yeah. Incredible stuff. Atlanta cinematographer Christian Springer, an Emmy award winner and a nominee this year for Atlanta. Thank you so much. Thank you.